Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue on with the holiday card series and today we'll be learning how to paint mistletoe. And I have a really simple mistletoe card design using my one stroke painting method. And we'll just work through and create this small little watercolor and then you can add it on to a blank card if you'd like to give it as a holiday gift. I'm starting out with 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. The brand that I'm using right now is Fluid. And I've mixed up a few different colors of green. You can use any green you have as long as you have a lighter green and a darker green. And I'm now just following the light pencil lines that I'd mapped out with my number four round brush. And I've started with the top stem and now I'm using my one stroke painting method to create the leaves and the leaves are sort of long and um, pointed at both ends and thicker in the middle and they grow in pairs for a mistletoe almost like maple seed pods and I'm just bringing down little sections um, in pairs and kind of building it out so that it'll look like a, a bunch, like a bouquet shape um, in the end. And the other thing I'm making sure that I'm doing is that I'm using some fresh green paint off my palette, and then I'm also rinsing and dabbing my brush and then creating some really light, faint leaves as well. And this color variation is really key for this style of painting. If you want to learn more about the details of how to paint like this, you can check out my online school um, at lauraashton.ca and I go over this in great detail in watercolor botanicals for beginners. So I'm continuing along creating this bouquet shape with the mistletoe leaves in pairs making sure that I'm using the lighter green, the darker green, and also rinsing my brush with um, clear water and dabbing it on a paper towel to get that lighter concentration of color. And when I say rinsing to continue painting with the lighter color, I really just mean you just dip your brush in the clean water, dab it lightly on the paper towel, and then you'll get that light faded out color. And the contrast of the lighter faded out color and darker color really brings this style of painting to life. Now I'm just erasing any of the pencil guidelines that I made for the initial shape of the bouquet. I make sure that the painting is completely dry before I do this, so feel free to give your painting a quick shot with a blow dryer before you go ahead and erase any guidelines. Now I decided I wanted to paint a red bow along the top of the mistletoe bouquet, so I took a little chisel brush with clean water and just kind of agitated out a little bit of the green stem so that I can place the bow in that area. Now I am just lightly penciling in the shape of a bow. I'm just doing a sort of a square in the center, two triangles on the either side, and then just bringing down sort of the tail ends of the bow with um, a little sort of um, clip out of each end and I'm just slightly penciling that in and then I'll take some red paint and go ahead and paint that. I'm starting with the center of the bow and I've just mixed up a red with alizarin crimson and scarlet lake and I just painted the center in and now I'm drawing that because I want to paint on each side of it and I don't want them all to run together. So for each section of the bow, make sure that you do dry it so that you don't have a big blob. Now I've added some clean water to the triangle parts of the bow on each side, and then I'm going to drop in the red paint. So 
So this is a wet on wet wash. And I'm not filling in every part of the bow with red. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white showing through. And then I'll just let it dry once I have all the paint dropped in. Now I am starting on the berries and I've mixed up a light gray using ultramarine and light red Windsor and Newton brand. That's sort of my go-to botanical gray mix. And now I'm going to paint the berries and I'm doing this by using a light gray and then leaving a white space for a highlight. I have switched to a smaller brush. This is a uh, size one. Um, but it holds a decent amount of paint, so I'm able to do each berry in kind of one stroke. And I'm starting off with that same light gray and I'm just mapping in each berry and I'll add in more definition and color later on. So now I've finished the berries and I used a bit of light green just to add some little centers onto the berries to create more definition as you saw in the previous section. And you can just add it to a few of them. You don't have to do it to all of them, but it helps create um, dimension. And that's where the sepal on the berry would have dried out before the berry formed. Now I'm taking my same small brush with the darkest mix of Green. I've actually added a bit more darker green to the mix, which is Perylene Green by Windsor & Newton. And I'm creating some definition by just darkening one side and then rinsing my brush with clean water and sort of softening out the inner edge so that it blends in. And this is creating a darker defined edge that will imply shadow. And it just gives your painting a little bit more of a finished realistic look. So I'm just finishing up adding some darker color and you don't have to do this to every leaf just where you think um, it might create more depth and form on the sort of bottom edges of leaves or where some of the leaves are overlapping each other. And I also did take some light gray and just darken the bottom portions of a few of the berries as well.
thanks so much for watching guys please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel to see a new video every Wednesday and if you'd like a notification when my videos go live you can click the little bell icon next to subscribe if you want to learn more about botanical watercolor painting then do check out my online school you can preview my class watercolor botanicals for beginners for free and check out materials, color mixing, techniques, and even one of the full projects for free. And just visit lauraashton.ca and then you can click free preview. And it won't ask you for any credit card information, you just sign up with your name and email and I'm the only one that receives that. And then you can try it out completely free. Mm -hmm.